Hello, I'm an old fart, and I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. I'm not an expert or an official representative of anything or anybody in any way, just like knives. And for a, a little over a year now, you've been visiting me every week and taking a little tour through my lifelong collection of small folding pocket knives. Thanks for the company. Uh, today we're going to look at this little knife. This is something a little unusual. I, I bought it kind of because of a novelty feature, which we'll talk about. Uh, and it will probably keep a place in my collection because of that feature. A an interesting little knife. Uh, this is a reactor by a company called Glow Rhino. So a little background on this. I do a few activities uh, at night in the dark or in the near dark. And I found it handy. I, I've got a couple of knives that have like you know, glow in the dark scales um, that are quite handy uh, for setting a knife down in the dark and then not being able to find it. All of the others are your traditional phosphorescent glow in the dark material, the stuff that uh, has to be charged up with light first. So if I remember, I'll stick my knife and a couple of other bits of equipment that I use outdoors in the sun for the afternoon before the evening when I need them, then I get a great glow out of them. And of course it does fade with time over several hours. And then I came across this. This is a knife that has a different approach. It has a glow in the dark inset on it. That's this little square here. But instead of traditional phosphorescent material, this uh, uses a tritium insert. So it will glow in the dark by itself uh, without needing to charge it up with sunlight. And I thought, well, that sounds really cool. I better try that. And then I had an opportunity to get one, and so here it is. So, in detail. Uh, the company is called um, Glow Rhino, and basically this is what they do. They make things with tritium inserts in them. Uh, and uh, this particular knife is called the Reactor. It's the titanium model. They also have a, a black one available. I forget the material. I think it might be G10. Um, it's a fairly simple knife, as knives go. It is a side flipper frame lock knife running on bearings. Um, and so, you know, your traditional titanium side flipper. It's okay, nothing special. Uh, the size, it's a mid-sized knife, open. It's 178 millimeters, which to use the standard ISO scale for measuring knives is about 0.97 pocket calculators. And for people who don't understand the pocket calculator scale, a couple of comparisons. It is slightly larger than a mini Groptilium, which is 173 millimeters, and uh, about the same size, as it turns out, as an Ontario Rat 2 or a Monterey Bay sort of mini old guard. So a you know, nice, comfortable mid-sized knife. Uh, the weight, it's 68 grams, which is light. It's, uh, that's considerably lighter, for example, than the Mini Griptilium, which is uh, 80 grams. So 12 grams lighter than a Mini Griptilium. Uh, it happens to be about the end. Of course, it's heavier than a bug out because everything is heavier than a bug out. It's about the same weight as the Pena X-Series knives. So reasonably compact reasonably light knife. The blade is uh, in theory a drop point, not very droppy, S35 VN steel, which is an okay steel. The body is fairly simple. It is two milled titanium slabs, not scales, just body slabs. And there are some internal, here let me open that again, there are some internal milled pockets to reduce the weight a little bit. Again, a traditional design. And then here's where it gets special. There are these two little glass cells, one in each side. And those are the tritium reservoirs. So what's that all about? Well, uh, tritium is an isotope of hydrogen. It's hydrogen with uh, a proton and a neutron, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, a proton and two neutrons, right? Proton and neutron is deuterium. Proton and Two neutrons is tritium. Anyway, it's got more neutrons than hydrogen likes to hold on to, and so it tends to shed them, which means that it is mildly radioactive. Very mildly radioactive. Don't run screaming from the room. It's not going to get you through your computer. 
What happens is it decays to helium-3, um, and it gives off what's called beta radiation, which means very mild radiation. In particular, it's not dangerous if it's in a container. It cannot pass through glass. So this tritium is inside a little glass vial. It can't get you. Okay. Now, tritium does not glow by itself, but what's happening is the inside of this glass chamber is coated with some phosphorescent paint, and the radioactivity is energizing the phosphorescent paint. So the result is that this little glass vial glows on its own. It does not have to be charged with sunlight. It will glow on its own. Now, not forever. Tritium's half-life is about 12 years. So that means in 12 years, it'll have half the tritium remaining. In another 12 years, half of that will be gone, and so on. So sort of over a normal person's lifetime, you will notice this dim, but it's certainly good for you know, many years if it's reasonably fresh. So anyway, the upshot of all of that science lecture, sorry about that, I, I, I am a scientist, um, is that it glows on its own. It does not have to be charged with sunlight. I thought that's really cool. Okay, on with descriptions. There is a clip. The clip is weird. The clip is uh, bent stainless steel. Why did I say it's weird? Well, look at the shape of the clip. You see it has the, the back fold. It goes that way first and then folds over itself. So that is what is usually used to create deep carry clips. So for example, I'll pull out this mini gratillion. You see it has the back fold. And the idea is that the, the back direction of the clip comes all the way to the edge of the knife, and so you get deep carry. Compare that to a knife that doesn't do that. No back fold no deep carry. So why did I say this one is weird? Well, because it's got the back fold, and yet it's not deep carry. The back only goes here. There's still quite a stub of knife sticking out above the clip. Weird. I'm not sure. What, did it try and fail to be deep carry? Or was it just, you know, a, a design statement? I don't know. So anyway, a little weird. Uh, lanyard hole, yes, there is one. It's in this piece of metal that sticks out the end, uh, which they call a pry bar. Um, we'll talk more about its effectiveness as a pry bar, but in any case, clearly having a lanyard through it would render it useless as a pry, pry bar. So let's just call it a, a backspacer extension with a lanyard hole in it. Uh, is the knife ambidextrous? I'll say no. Being a side flipper, obviously the flip is ambidextrous. I don't think I have the strength to open this with my left hand, but I'm going to complain about it in a minute as the detent is very strong. But you know, a lefty could open it with their left hand. But being a frame lock, the frame lock really is designed to be undone with your right thumb, and clearly the clip is one-sided. It can't be moved to the other side. It has a clear presentation side, so we'll say no, it's not ambidextrous. Uh, some of my U.S. colleagues always want to know where knives are made. I don't know where this one is made. The company is in Detroit. And I think it's made in Detroit. I haven't seen a definitive confirmation of that. I haven't asked them, but let's say it's made in the US, in Detroit. So there's the details of that little knife. And there's some things to like about it, and, and some things I don't, and, and something that I don't know whether I like or not. So we're going to have a third category today called the don't know if I like this or not category. Uh, so what I like. Well, I mean, the scythe is a gimmick. The gimmick is the glow. So, you know, I like the glow. That's cool. Okay. I'm going to make an attempt to show you the glow in a still photo or two in a minute. I like that the glow reservoir is on both sides, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to accidentally drop your knife with one side up to be able to find it in the dark. Well, thank you for putting two reservoirs in it. And I like that you don't have to charge it, so it'll glow. You know, even if it's been stored in the dark for months, it'll still glow. So that's very nice. Now we're going to come back to this. The, the glow could be brighter. You probably can't notice anything like a glow there right now. It has to be quite dark to be visible, so more on that in a moment. Uh, I like the blade steel. S35VM is a good, reliable steel. It's what Chris Reeve used until recently. They're now upgrading a lot of their knives to S45, but S35 is you know, a damn good steel. Reliable, sharpens easily, sharpens well. I like, uh, as a frame lock, I like that there is a hardened steel insert in there for the lock surface, so that's a, a good touch. That means that it's not going to loosen with time and not likely to have lock stick, so that's you know, a good basic frame lock design. 
is fairly comfortable to hold. It's four fingers crowded, but four fingers fit well, and there's a generous finger rest here from that curve of the blade, so it really does give you a secure lock on the blade, and that's nice. And the flipper tab, which is right there, acts as a finger guard when closing. See, I'm hitting my thumb with the flipper tab, so I can't, when I'm careless, which I am quite often, I can't close it on my hand, so I like that too. Um, there, are, there are some things that don't like. I think, you know, overall, what I'd say is that because the, the point of this knife is the tritium inserts, it's just sort of a compromise as a knife. It's not awful. It's okay. It's, you know, it's like a lot of other generic titanium frame locks. It's probably not a design I would have picked except for the glow. Um, I don't care for the appearance that much. It's very angly. Is that a word? Angly? You know, these weird angles here and that weird thing sticking at the end. I really don't like the blade shape very much. The, the, it is technically a drop point, but there's almost no drop and a great big upsweet. And the result is that the blade looks short and it looks very pointy. It looks weapony. Um, and we're going to come back to that when I talk about non-threatening. I, I think this is a bit of a scary looking blade. The other thing I don't care for too much is the, the mechanism. It is a frame lock, so there is a detent, and boy, is that detent strong. I, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that flipper tab right now. It is hard to open. Um, it will open. Once it opens, it flies open because you had to build so much pressure up. But I'd like it to be easier to open. The day will probably come that I don't have the strength in my fingers to open that. I already cannot open it with my left hand. I'm, I'm not going to embarrass myself by showing you, but I can't. Um, and I've tried, you know, lo loosening it. I, I've loosened the pivot screw until it's turning freely and it hasn't changed the detent strength. I've put some uh, heavy oil in the detent hole, on the detent, you know, on the detent ball. You know, I've done the things you do and it's just a strong detent. So I'd like it to be a little easier to open than that. The other thing I don't like, I mentioned already, is that weird clip. I like deep carry clips, but I like deep carry clips that carry deeply. I don't really see the point of having a, a, a recurve clip that still stops here a centimeter from the end of the knife. The butt geometry prevents it from going out farther and being deep carry. So that's just a, a weird design thing. And I mentioned this thing on the end. They, they call this a pry bar, this protrusion of the backspacer here. And if you look at it this way, you can see, you know, there is a there is an angle to it. Maybe it's trying to be a pry bar. Now, I have two issues with that. One is I don't need one well, of three issues. One is I don't need a pry bar on my knife in, in areas where I'm likely to need a pry bar. I have a pry bar. Uh, second, if I was trying to have this be a pry bar, you know, to have one less thing to have in my pocket, well, it wouldn't be a very good one. First of all, it doesn't come to much of a point. There's still about five, six millimeters there across the end of the pry bar, so it's not very pointy and it's not very long. Well, I, I don't know what you could pry with that. Um, so I don't think that it's actually very useful. I don't need it. And I think it's kind of ugly, so I wish it wasn't there. Um, so anyway, there's my don't like list. Now I said I was going to add a third category because I don't know if I, this is a thing I like or a thing I don't like, and so I'll just talk about it. And that's the brightness of the tritium. It's not very bright to cut to the chase. Um, and I, I really bounced around whether to put that under don't like and say it's not bright enough, or is it actually a design intent? Is it exactly as bright as they want it to be? And so anyway, you know, I, honestly, I bought the knife as a novelty because I thought the tritium was a cool idea. And I was kind of hoping that, you know, just sitting here in everyday daylight on my table, it would be glowing like a beacon. And I could show my friends, isn't that cool, ah, that's tritium. Ah. And of course it isn't like that at all. Um, in normal daylight, it's not visible at all. In the dark, it's not bad, it's not bright. But it is clearly visible. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of still photos here. So th this is the knife sitting on my table here and with room lights on. And I'll just switch the lights off. And so you can see, you know, you lose 
most of the knife, but there's, there's the tritium window. It's glowing. It's certainly enough that if I dropped the thing in the dark, I was looking in the right spot, I would see it. It's not glowing like a beacon, but I'd see it. Um, so, but is that bright enough? I, I don't know. I'm just going to hit it here uh, with some ultraviolet light. I, I have a UV flashlight here. And if I hit it with ultraviolet light, you can see the difference it makes. That's, that's how bright it could be. So what's happening here is the, the tritium on the inside is just not energizing the phosphor very much. Now, again, is that because, is that the amount they intended to have? Or is the tritium old? So, you know, it's half-lifed itself away. Maybe there isn't enough of it. I, I don't know. I tend to think that it should be brighter than that. Um, it, let me bring him here. Here's another knife uh, beside it. This, this is a uh, TRM Neutron with glow-in-the-dark scales from Match Anderson. And uh, if I switch the lights off again, you can see uh, that's bright. Now, granted, these things have to be charged in daylight, but you get several hours out of them, and what a difference. And the reason I didn't put this in the don't like category is this could very well be deliberate. I know one of the things tritium is used on is uh, gun sites, for example, where you do not want a bright circle. You want to be just barely able to see the site, but have your night vision preserved. So all right, well, maybe that was the design intent here is it's just bright enough to see if it's sitting in the dark, but not, you know, reducing my night vision. So I'm going to give them that and say, okay, they designed it this way. Um, but it's not, it's not very show-off-y, which I was kind of hoping it would be, you know, you know, blink, blink, it's not that. So I was like, yeah, a little disappointed, but, but it's okay. Anyway, um, so the tritium is not so bright that it's going to outstound you and amaze your friends, except in the dark. But it's probably bright enough to serve its actual intended purpose, which is if the thing is sitting on the ground in the dark, you'll see it. Anyway, um, let's move on to my internationally unknown knife rating systems. First, we'll do the NTGK rating, where NTGK is for non-threatening gentleman's knife, and we'll do non-threatening first. So as a non-threatening, the good news is it's not too large. Huge knives tend to be threatening, so this isn't that. Um, and the bad, that's it for the good. Well, the bad is, um, I think it's a little scary looking. There's lots of edges and corners, and the blade is kind of pointy and stabby looking, so I think the appearance is a little threatening looking. Uh, the opening is certainly threatening. It is fast opening and loud, and there isn't any way to open it slowly or quietly. Well, you can, of course, it's like any flipper. You can open it slowly by kind of catching the blade, but that's clearly not the design intent and is dangerous. So I would say the only way to open this thing is a little bit threatening for people who don't understand that that's not a switchblade. So I give it only a B as non-threatening. Uh, as a gentleman's stuff, how's it do? Well, you know, the tritium is a conversation piece, right? And, and gentleman's jewelry often has a conversation piece aspect to it. So this is certainly that. Um, the bad, well, the silly pocket clip. It's a very light knife. It could carry very easily in the pocket. It would be great with a deep carry clip. And this isn't a deep carry clip. This is a failed deep carry clip. So it sticks out of the pocket. And what sticks out of the pocket is this weird pry bar corner thing here. So I, I don't think that's very good as a gentleman's knife feature. Well, all the angles on it, it looks very tooly. It, it looks like I have a tool in my pocket. I do have a tool in my pocket, but you know, as a gentleman's knife, it could look a little classier than that. And there's a, a fair amount of writing on the blade, and it's high contrast writing, right? It's engraved black writing, so it jumps out at you. I don't have a problem with the model being on the blade, although there are knives that feel, you know, that don't feel self-conscious about that and that don't loudly proclaim the model on the blade and somehow they're still popular. I don't really have a problem with the steel type being on the blade. I don't particularly care that I've got a serial number on the blade there. I'm like, really? Is this, I need that as my immediate reference. Um, 
As far as I know, there's no legal requirement that the serial number be on the blade. Maybe there is a requirement that it be on the knife somewhere and put it inside. Um, so anyway, and, and there's a you know, conspicuous logo here. And so it's, it's just a little bit flashy and conspicuous. So anyway, all that said, I give it a B as a gentleman's knife as well. And so a B overall as a non-threatening gentleman's knife. That's not an awful mark. That's just not what it's for. What it's for is a basic utility tool that you can have in your pocket that happens to have the tritium in it. So, um, how about as a knife nerd? Uh, what will my knife nerd friends think? Well, the pro is the tritium. My knife nerd friends go, oh, cool, tritium. <laughs> um, and the con is the tritium. Um, it doesn't glow very bright, and you know I'm probably not going to turn the lights out and invite my knife nerd friends to sit in the dark with me. That would just seem a little weird. Um, so the you know the tritium is the pro, but it's not the novelty that I was hoping it would be. Uh, the other thing is the action is very stiff. My knife nerd friends will not be impressed by that over strong detent and this weird ambiguous pry bar. What is that for? Um, I don't know anybody who'll think that's a good design. I know people who won't care, uh, people who would have liked to pry bar and say that's not a good one. So it'll generally not be a favorite thing by my knife nerd friends. So overall, I'm going to give it a B minus as a KM rating. And finally, the CMR, the cut myself rating, never cut myself. Seems a fairly safe knife to handle, especially with that uh, finger guard. So we'll give it an A as a CMR. And that brings us to the end. In summary, um, I I'm glad to have this knife because it's cool. It's not a favorite. If it didn't have those tritium inserts in it, it's probably not a knife I would have bought because I don't really care for the looks that much. But I do occasionally do some work in the dark um, and I will have it in the, uh, in the stable of things that are around for using in the dark. For, for short haul uses, if I'm going to be in the dark for a couple of hours, I'll probably use something like the uh, TRM Neutron with the glow in the dark scales, if I remember to charge them, because they're so much brighter that it's more effective. But for something that I might be out for many hours, or, you know, or you know, I might drop in the dark and want to find six hours later, um, the, the permanent glow of the tritium will have it, so I'll keep it in the collection for that, even though it's not a favorite certainly not something I'm going to carry every day. And there we have it. Thank you for following along. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.